Thank you very much for joining us. We begin this news hour with the latest efforts to end the eight-year war in Yemen. A delegation from Saudi Arabia has arrived in the Yemeni capital, Sana'a. Oman is mediating the discussions about a permanent ceasefire. The delegations are expected to hold meetings with Houthi representatives. The talks come after Saudi Arabia and Iran agreed to restore diplomatic relations last month as part of a deal brokered by China. On Saturday, Yemen's Houthi rebels and Saudi Arabia exchanged prisoners. The Houthis received 13 detainees in exchange for one Saudi prisoner. Nearly 400,000 people have been killed and millions more displaced in the conflict. Well, let's get a closer look at the war in Yemen, which began as part of the Arab Spring of 2011, when President Ali Abdullah Saleh gave up power to his deputy. After rising instability and political divisions, Houthi rebels captured the capital, Sana'a, in 2014 and demanded a new government. Saudi Arabia backed the internationally recognized government and launched a military campaign against the Houthis. In 2016, UN-sponsored talks between the Yemeni government and rebels began in Kuwait but didn't stop the fighting. Then in 2017, Houthi rebels, believed to be backed by Iran, killed former President Ali Abdullah Saleh after he broke ties with the group. A year later, UN broker talks made progress and last year the warring sides agreed to a truce which lasted for six months. Well, let's bring in Al Jazeera's Hashem Ahelbara to the news hour. He's covered the Yemen conflict extensively. Hashem, first of all, how significant is this moment and these talks in Sana'a today? Can we expect a breakthrough in this conflict? It is definitely a defining moment. I've been talking to different sources, particularly from the Houthi delegation in Sana'a, and they say that they can see the prospects of peace uh, growing in the region. What is happening as we speak in, in Sana'a is that the Saudi delegates, along with the Omanis who are brokering the deal, along with the Houthis, are trying to work out the modalities of a permanent ceasefire. And, you know, this time, they're trying to work out all the details, particularly when it comes to the areas where you still have uh, military confrontations, and they would like to ensure that this is something that is going to last okay. long. Now, when they, at the same time they will uh, announce uh, a prisoner uh, exchange between the Houthis and the uh, internationally recognized government, this is going to be phase one. The key actors in this are on one hand Saudi Arabia, on the other hand the Houthis who control the northern part of Yemen. Right. Now before we talk about the next steps, you, you talk about several phases here and of course we've seen the prisoner exchange. Before we get to the next steps and hurdles possibly, what made this moment possible to have a Saudi delegation in Sana'a after eight years of a devastating conflict? What is it that led to this moment today? Is China, uh, Saudi Arabia's rapprochement with Iran brokered by China, does that have a role in what's going Definitely. on? Definitely. Massive impact on what we see happening on the ground now in Yemen. The Saudis launched the campaign against the Houthis in 2015, hoping to be able to bring back the internationally recognized government to power. But then the campaign turned into a debacle. Years later, it's been criticized by the international community. Humanitarian activists have been saying it's about time to end the conflict in uh, Yemen. Mm -hmm. There's also this rapprochement between the Saudis and the Iranians. And you can clearly see that Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, in his vision to uh, move forward, modernize the country, needs to invest more in the country. He needs a sense of permanent stability in the region. And I have to remind our viewers that the drones that targeted oil installations in Saudi Arabia, they've been blamed on the Iranians and the, and the Houthis. And if they, I think the Saudis are now willing to turn that chapter. Mm. Now, they will definitely have to go back to the Iranians when it comes to the implementation of the modalities of every single step of this agreement if it happens yeah. in Yemen. Now, if the agreement happens, what would it look like? Are we likely to see a centralized government in Sana'a again, or is it much more complicated than that? Are we likely to see a power-sharing mm -hmm. agreement between the Houthis and the Saudi-backed government? I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be a, a, a mammoth task for everybody, because I was just a while ago talking to a senior Houthi official who was very optimistic 
on the truth. But when I asked him about power sharing, he said, wait. Mm -hmm. Because as far as we are concerned as the Houthis, this is what we would like to see happening. We would like the restrictions imposed on us to be lifted. We would like the embargo to come to an end. We'd like foreign troops, a reference to the Emirati mm -hmm. troops stationed in the island of Socatra to pull out from the country. We would like compensation for the atrocities committed against us. And we would like the international community to understand that the uh, status quo ante is never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Second condition set by the Houthis is that all the parties have to come to the Houthis and say it has to be a sovereign, independent Yemen with zero influence from Saudi Arabia or any Gulf nation and no links whatsoever with the United States of America. I was going to ask you about the United States. Where does this leave the US? The, the Americans, of course, provided support to the Saudi-led uh, coalition, giving them arms, weapons throughout this eight-year conflict. Can the Americans still play a role in putting a close to this conflict? I don't see any leverage, to be honest with you, when it comes to Yemen anytime soon for the simple reason. When you look at the optics, it's the Saudis doing business with the Houthis. In a way or another, it's a Houthis being now consolidating their power in the northern part of the country. So from now onwards, it's, you have to go back to the Houthis for any deal. The Houthis, they have this uh, position totally anti-American uh, in the region. They say that the biggest problem we face in the region is, to be, is because of the US interf in, in, interference uh, in the region. What are they likely to do? The only option left for the Americans is try to boost the presence of the internationally recognized government to be able to gain some leverage in the future. But I have to say that even the presidential council, which was appointed uh, last year, doesn't have any control over huge territory in Yemen. Now, there's another huge problem, which is basically the southern part of the country, which says, no, after 2015, we're definitely going to break away from the north. The Houthis are saying Yemen should never break away. Yeah, interesting. And uh, is this also perhaps the Saudis turning their backs to the Americans? Briefly, please. And also to the Emirates. Mm -hmm. they, they teamed up in 2014, uh, in 15, to launch this fight against the Houthis. Now they're walking separate ways, both each with a different agenda when it comes. And I think this is likely to further strain ties between the Saudis and the Emirates in the near future. Thank you very much, Hashim, for that. Thank you for your analysis of uh, the situation in Yemen.